Today, I intend to talk about something uh, new and rare in field of uh, telecom hacking. So, it's really, really hard for uh, security experts, uh, telecommunication engineers, and mobile operators to deal with signaling and telco attacks. Why it's hard? Because uh, telco networks are complex and includes many segments like radio signaling, IP backbones, IT packets, uh, packet data actually, uh, etc. And in this talk, uh, I don't want to talk about basics and traditional tanks. I just want to illustrate how we can break into a hardened telecom infrastructure, why they are using security devices and security mechanisms. If you are ready, let's get into First of all, I want to introduce myself. I'm Ali, a cybersecurity researcher focusing on all aspects of offensive for more than eight years. I'm author of books and articles as well. Uh, I'm a regular speaker and trainer at inter international conferences, uh, holding Master of Computer Science and many international certificates. Okay, uh, as you can see, according to the news, um, this slide, many fraud, uh, other types of cyber incidents have occurred in past several years, uh, while they're abusing telecommunication and mobile infrastructure. In top left corner, you can see that malfactors exploit SS7 network to inject a malware to attack on financial companies and banks. In other news, on the left side, you can see that uh, hackers targeted UK Metro Bank through SS7, which is the SS7 is one of the main uh, signaling protocol or to stand for signaling system number seven and play a critical role in telecommunication and actually traditional tra telecommunication infrastructure. Okay, and uh, on right side, there is a news regarding to vulnerabilities in mobile networks in the United States. In this slide, I divided all possible attacks and vulnerabilities in telecom. First is a subscriber uh, profile data leakage or subscriber data leakage. The second one is network data leakage or maybe uh, mobile node data leakage. Third one is tracking mobile subscribers and breaking their privacy. The next one is sniffing, spoofing, fraud, like uh, transferring money um, using SS USSD operations or making free or cheap call. For example, uh, you may uh, make a call to another country uh, while you are paying uh, for the call like a, an internal one or maybe uh, a call to your current country uh, so okay uh, for those who has n not enough background of telecommunication and mobile network here is the architecture of a mobile operator each mobile network operator or MNO has three main segments includes radio access network or RAN which is responsible for all radio and baseband communications like your connectivity from your handset or mobile phone to the tower the next one is circuit switch network or CS network CS core network handles your voice and SMS something like that and the third segment is packet network or PS packet switch network which is responsible to bring your internet connection 
In this slide, I'm going to talk about security mechanism in radio access networks or RAN. Uh, mostly there are three types of security mechanism in radio access network. First is phone registration or any type of policy for your hardware and IMEI, which is a unique code uh, for uh, mobile hardware. Second is enabling ciphering algorithms to fight against interception and man-in-the-middle attack or MITM. Third item is using only LTE and LTE advanced infrastructure instead of traditional mobile core networks in 2G and 3G. So now we want to review the high level uh, architecture of radio access networks. In radio access network, we have cell tower, maybe you know BTS uh, in 2G, node B in 3G, and E node B in 4G, or evolve node B in 4G or LT. You can see that. E node B is passing your traffic to PS, packet switch, and circuit switch networks based on the traffic type. Okay, it means that if you want to connect to the internet, your traffic will go through PS network or packet switch network, and if you want to make a call or maybe send the SMS. Uh, the traffic will go through CS or circuit switch network. Okay, uh, so why using IMEI policy? So the answer is to fight against phone smuggling uh, and maybe some lawful and security monitoring, tracking and locating stolen devices and criminals. Uh, okay, now with the help of a phone like Motorola C115 and 118 and Osmocom BB software, we can set an invalid or fake or even uh, duplicate IMEI and set up a call to test network reactions. As you can see in this screenshot here, network sends identity request to my phone and the type of identity was IMEI. Here is the screenshot. You can see the type of identity is IMEI. So I should reply with a valid IMEI number. So uh, I reply to it. Uh, request using an invalid IMEI set to all zero. That's I think that's cool. And so <laughs> uh, the network accepted my invalid IMEI because ciphering procedures completed as you can see. Uh, there are some types of uh, ciphering keys like KC SRS and RAND or random number in radio access network which harden a radio network to avoid active sniffing and they always store in a home location register or HLR or HSS uh, in core network. Actually HSS or HLR as subscriber database has a Components are called AUC or Authentication Center, which is responsible for ciphering and authentication procedures. To bypass and get this information, we are going to targeting AUC in HLR HSS by. Uh, please note that uh, when I'm talking about HLR, it means traditional node in for example 2G GSM or even UMTS and when whenever I am talking about HSS 
which exactly is like as HLR uh, HSS uh, is in core network when we are going to talk about LTE or even 3G uh, actually we are going to targeting AUC in HLR HSS by abusing SS7 and signaling access as a roaming partner okay uh, as you can see here I sent a malicious SS7 map or mobile application part SAI or send authentication info to targeted core network from SS7 network to retrieve ciphering information and the network respond me via uh, random number, asterisk, and KC values in clear text. It's really cool. Okay, uh, another security mechanism is using LTE, only LTE and LTE advance to bring highest quality and performance. Uh, having more uh, security and privacy in core and radio segments and other factors like voiceover LT or VoLT, flexibility and many others. Okay guys, let's review bypassing method in this slide. Totally, uh, there is a one general way and that's downgrading subscribers to traditional technologies like 3G and 2G which are vulnerable to perform downgrading we need to use a signal jammer okay security in circuit switch network or CS core network first thing is using SMS home routing and the second mechanism is using signaling firewalls okay cool uh, Home routing act as a proxy, and um, the definition of a home router is to hiding subscriber MC, which is a very very valuable information to perform hacking scenarios from hacker sites. As you can see, a hacker uh, requests to receive MC from HLR HSS. And the HLR HSS respond with real value. Uh, however, home router change the value with a fake one. Okay. First things from a hacker point of view is how we can detect if home routing is enabled or not. Just we need to send two or more malicious SS7 messages like uh, send routing info and even send routing info for SM. If you received different responses, it means that SMS home routing is in place. As you can see, we have two different uh, attempts here. In first one, a hacker tried to send a malicious SS7 request to the core network, and the core network respond, a SMS router respond with a number. So, hacker retrieved a number as IMSI. In second scenario and in second attempt, hacker resent the same message to request the IMSI. So, as a true result, hacker must retrieve a same the same value of IMSI. However, as you can see, the numbers are different. So. The hacker received different numbers as MC. So, in this case, SMS home routing is in place. Okay, 
let's go deeper to bypass this security mechanism. In telecommunication networks or mobile networks, we have uh, three types of GTs or global title which act as IP address. Okay. MSISDN consists of MCC or Mobile Country Code, NDC, and SN. MC consists of MCC, Mobile Country Code, MNC or Mobile Network Code, which indicates your mobile operator code, okay, and MSIN which is a unique number. MGT consists of MCC, Mobile Country Code, NDC, and MSIN. As you can see, hacker can abuse MGT number and a valid random MC number to request other information regarding to targeted mobile number or MSISDN and its real MC. So, According to uh, the picture here, hacker tried to send malicious SS7 message to the core network using MGT and hacker guess a random MC located in targeted HLR HSS. It's easy to use because, for example, a hacker could uh, take advantage from a known MC like uh, for example my MC I know my MC there are many many different applications that you can try to retrieve your MC or even uh, some online and offline databases on the internet and again like previous slides uh, core networks and actually nodes in core network replied with real values however SMS home router replied the actual number plus MSC address because hacker guess an MC which is valid for the operator mobile operator with MGT number okay so the next security mechanism is signaling firewall. Mobile operators use um, actual signaling firewalls to protect their signaling infrastructure or circuit switch network. Signal packet uh, inspection, filtering, uh, white and black listing are main feature of a signaling firewall so how we can bypass it to bypass these kind of firewalls we need just to playing with TCAP okay what is TCAP TCAP or transaction capabilities application part is a SS7 sub protocol and it's like TCP TCAP enables the deployment of uh, advanced intelligent network services by uh, supporting non-circuit related information exchange between signaling points using SCCP or uh, signaling connection control part which is connectionless service and TCAP provides the framework to retrieve information or even invoke uh, remote operations. TCAP uh, offers the means for end users in the SS7 network to query another end office and acts as the software interface between an SS7 office and database services in order to actually obtain data from the SS7 network. Okay. Well, uh, to perform bypassing, we need to remove application context name from TCAP. Or, the next way is sending double operation message. 
So I want to illustrate what is application context name. The application context name or ACN is used for all supported ITU TCAP message except abort message. No attempt to retrieve the ACN is made for abort messages. All other um, supported messages uh, may have a dialogue portion kind containing a dialogue request or you need directional dialogue, dialogue response PDU from which the ASN is retrieved. If no, no dialogue portion is detected, then the ACN is summed to be none. Uh, the TCAP opcode based routing feature attempts to find the operation code or opcode in all supported ITU TCAP message um, except abort. These messages must contain invoke or return results last or not last as the first component. If not, the opcode is assumed to be not. Okay, removing application context name from TCAP message. Uh, to start the procedure, we need to remove dialogue request section from our malicious SS7 message before sent to uh, core network. Then there will not application context name to point to malicious SS7 map message directly. According to the picture you can see uh, the hacker is trying to send a normal SS7 message without a uh, dialogue which means um, the hacker removed dialogue request from SS7 message plus in addition actually the hacker put malicious message opcode inside the whole SS7 message so as a result CS core respond to normal message in addition malicious message so a hacker retrieved all information that he or she want to have in this case okay sending double operation message most of signaling firewall uh, block or accept a message based on message type so each signaling message has its own operation code or opcode that I mentioned before and it's a vital number. In this code, in this, uh, sorry, in this pic picture, you can see uh, that the opcode of send routing info for SMSI for SM is 45 in this scenario. As you can see here, Hacker is trying to put a legitimate SS7 map message operation code in the first step. And then hacker put a malicious SS7 map message. So signaling firewall will check just the first operation code, which is pointing to legitimate operation and pass through to net core network and can address malicious operation and in addition legitimate SS7 map message and malicious map message. As a result, HLR HSS respond with some kind of error because uh, it can't understand <laughs> what we are looking for so signaling firewall will keep the whole session to get back any uh, a legitimate SS7 message so 
the hacker will try to retrieve and request actually everything that's valuable for it because the whole session establish and signaling firewall is keeping it so the hacker will take advantage from this uh, actually session and so signaling firewall treat like the previous one because signaling firewall keep the whole session and this session is legitimate so as a result core network respond with all information regarding to for example subscriber MC and network information that hacker requested solutions uh, actually first and important thing is hardening the devices protocols and uh, communications based on industry standards like 3GPP, Etsy, etc. Most of related vulnerabilities can be patched using hardening and security audit. Second one is using firewall or if you are using signaling firewall already, you can fine tune and optimize it. A TO, TSOC, TSOC, or Telecom Security Operations Center is highly recommended. Like IT and IP backbones, which need to have real-time security monitoring. Telecom networks need uh, to have something like that. Periodic assessment and audit are necessary, and... Finally, training and security awareness are very useful. Thank you guys for your attention. You can stay in touch with me, sharing experience and knowledge together and finding more friends. And please stay safe and healthy. And thank you, uh, organizer, for uh, organizing uh, such a great event.